Okay, well, let's have a look at this little uh, storybook. Folks, who's ever seen one of those storybooks? Well, what does everybody say? Oh, how would all the animals fit on Noah's Ark? Do you know the sad thing is, though, when you grow up with that sort of thinking in your mind, look what happens. He's a newspaper man. He's telling four million people in Melbourne that's what Noah's Ark looked like. Now, that's just a fraction of the size of real Noah's Ark. And I tell you what, it certainly doesn't show the skill and the craftsmanship of ancient people, does it? Now, this ark had to be 300 cubits long. A cubit, by the way, is from your elbow to the outstretched middle finger, roughly half a metre on an average sized person. So 300 cubits, 150 metres. Folks, that's three Olympic swimming pools connected end to end. Tell me, does that look like that dodgy little boat in the newspaper article? It's a massive ship. Do you know, as a child, I come out from England as a migrant. Ten years of age, we want the uh, ship we came out was a converted World War II aircraft carrier. Same size as Noah's Ark. Like I say, a big ship even by modern standards, wasn't it? Anyway, it was 50 cubits or 25 metres wide, 30 cubits or 15 metres in height. That's the height of a four to five storey building. Also had a cubit window for light and ventilation. But you know, on Noah's Ark, there was only three levels, but each level is very high, as you can see with this model here. No problem for very tall animals on Noah's Ark. Now, is anybody familiar with Captain Cook? You know, uh, Captain Cook's ship, the Endeavour, you could actually fit 54 of those inside of Noah's Ark. Here we go. That's, that's a scale model of the Endeavour to the size of Noah's Ark. And like I say, you can fit 54 of these inside of Noah's Ark. But you notice that Noah's Ark doesn't have a sail, does it? A propeller, a rudder. Why is that? Well, folks, it wasn't going anywhere. The whole world was covered in water for five months. There was no port for five months. See, a normal ship is built streamlined. Is that true? For speed and manoeuvrability. Say they go from Melbourne to Los Angeles. But Noah's Ark was only built for two reasons. Huge capacity and amazing stability. Now, if Noah was just a little guy like me and the cubit only that big, could actually hold 522 rail cars, 240 sheep per car. That's a total of 125,000 sheep. But by the way, that's not even packed in time. Now, the stability of Noah's Ark was also amazing. You see, Korean and American naval architects have done extensive tests. And what they found was this, that Noah's Ark was stable in 390 kilometre winds. Is that pretty amazing? Folks, 35 metre waves were no problem for Noah's Ark. It was actually 13 times more stable than the minimum requirements of American shipping. Beautifully stable. It's just like a log in the water, virtually unsinkable. Amazing stability. And in fact, the new oil tankers and oil carriers that go around the world today, well, guess what? They're now made more in the shape of Noah's Ark. Okay, well, I'm just going to duck in through the door now. We're going to have a look around inside of Noah's Ark. Just be with us for a few minutes as we look around. Let's take a walk along the top deck. You can see the individual living quarters of Noah, Shem, Ham and Japheth in the wide. They would have probably lived up here due to this being the best position for light and ventilation. We don't really know how the interior was laid out. So what I've done, I've constructed each level with prayerful thought and imagination just to show you the various pens, cages and rooms. The Bible tells us how long the ark was. It tells us how wide and how high. It also describes a single door into the ark, a cubit window for light and ventilation, and also, as we've already mentioned, the three decks inside the ark. It was covered in pitch that was a resin-like substance that was there for waterproofing. It also describes rooms in the ark, but it doesn't actually uh, describe the shape and the size of those rooms. What I've done, I've set them out inside the ark to give us an idea what it would have possibly looked like. Here we are on the top level. Noah and his family would have probably abided here because of the better ventilation and the better light. And over here we can see some desks where they would have recorded the daily activities and many other important records. Food and water would have been stored for convenience next to the animals, as you can see next to these cows that are eating contentedly. Well-preserved food would have been stored conveniently throughout the ark for Noah and his family. Can you just imagine the excitement of Noah as God brought the animals to the ark? 